Okay, here's a little post motor I was playing with. Um, where I basically just wanted to have another little cool motor that I could run for a really long time, maybe a capacitor. So as soon as I get a uh, super capacitor, that's what I'm going to use here. But um, this is just a very basic post motor circuit. It's really a um, Bedini schoolgirl, simplified schoolgirl circuit. Um, but I'm using a uh, the pancake coil from a dollar store dancing light or whatever you want to call them. Uh, <clears throat> as my pickup winding or my trigger winding and it's actually kind of sandwiched in well it's, it's just kind of jammed in here as the core of this other coil I have and I wanted to uh, show how, how good that works I've used um, relay coils and other extremely high turn um, thin gauge wire coils as, as uh, trigger windings before and they always work great but um, when you use strong enough neodymium magnets you can can get some really cool um, rotor action going on for very low input. So right here I've got uh, this little rechargeable 1.2 volt cell and I've got my meter leads hooked up to uh, read the milliamp draw right now and um, I've just got this little LED load here. So I'm going to ever so slightly spin it to show you um, how easily the transistor t cuts on. You see, it takes the slightest, just the slightest bit of movement by those magnets passing across that little high turn coil that just fires right up, which is pretty interesting also because um, it also causes the transistor to fire even when the circuit at uh, you know, one and a half volts is still running down below half a milliamp, even around um, a couple hundred microamps. It'll still get that transistor to fire with enough juice to uh, light up these LEDs, which I thought was pretty wild. And um, I first started out this circuit with this coil over here, which is not hooked up. And the goal there... Um, was to get really high RPMs, which I could actually get with this set of coils here. I, I can get very high RPMs from about uh, 50 milliamps or so from one of these batteries that were about, about 4 volts, let's just say. Um, but I wasn't happy with the back spikes that I was getting off there. It seemed like they, everything was going to the rotor which was cool and all that, that serves the purpose of high RPMs, which I'm gonna take advantage of as soon as I get another uh, transistor that is with a uh, smaller body so it doesn't interact with my magnets underneath here. Um, I'm gonna hook that up as well through a switch, but this right here, which I'll show in a little bit, is really, I'm not gonna say efficient, but it works great, so. Just gonna kind of spin that up a little bit just to show I ran this all night just to see if by some slight chance uh, for whatever reason it would stop um, but it didn't it's such a free turning wheel that when I spin it up it's I really have to wait some amount of time just to be sure it's it's not you know spinning on its own uh, momentum which a lot of times it is. But after a while, you can tell, obviously, that since it's not going to stop, it's going. So you can see over here, I'm getting that wheel to spin, which is a fairly heavy rotor, by the way. This is, this is no light, itty-bitty itty guy. This is all solid metal here. And uh, going at about, whoops. Going at about dancing between over a milliamp, a little under a milliamp, so about a milliamp draw right there. And we get the uh, 
nice little LED blink from that. But I'm going to fidget with the base resistance here, cut it down, because I've noticed there are certain spots where the back spike gets a little bit brighter. Maybe I can find, there you go, right about here seems to pick up the brightness of those LEDs seem to pick up slightly draw goes down to about half a milliamp I'm just gonna let that go for a little bit just to show so when you're doing stuff like this and you're going from a higher speed and tuning down and your speed decreases and you're still getting a draw I mean, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it, it's going to continue with a motive force forever. It's, it might just be spinning down on its own momentum, and through that it's triggering uh, the transistor to fire. Since you have a battery source, it's going to light your load. That doesn't mean it's going to run, but if you let it go long enough like this before changing your setting again, um, you'll be able to tell. So you can see this is pretty solid 0. 0.6 milliamp right there kind of jump down there a little bit 0.5 but it doesn't look like it's uh, slowing down at all and we're back up to the 0.6 so it's jumping around uh, from there now I think it's safe to say at that point that it will continue to go from half a milliamp Let's see if I can cut it down a little more If it's real quiet, I can hear um, at the point when that thing stops clicking, making that little uh, very instantaneous self-oscillation ring. So right now, we're down to about, oh, we're dropping off, right? We're about 0.1 milliamps. Let's just say. I say that that's about fair. Uh, well, right there. Going even lower than that. So you can see this the circuit will probably eventually stop. I'm just gonna show at what point those LEDs stop going. And you can see how low we're getting down here. Turn to the micro lamp scale. That cuts out the LEDs. Hmm. So yeah, that's. I mean, I can just turn the resistance as high as it'll go. See, as soon as I start seeing the light, right about, right about there, you see a tiny bit of light. That won't run. So you can see superficially, you can have the impression of about 50 uh, microamps that this thing is running off of, but it's really just going off its own momentum. It'll eventually stop. So I've noticed that I really have to get it up to about half a milliamp or so for it to sustain, which, hey, that's, that's pretty good, if you ask me. It doesn't go blazing fast, um, but it does go pretty fast from uh, 3.7 volts. But what I like doing is running it from an electrolytic capacitor at about 20 volts. So I'm going to show that in a second. All right, so now we've got a 42-volt 6800 microfarad capacitor. It's a pretty big capacitor. I don't have any super caps. Uh, that's probably the biggest capacitor I have without let's see. well, except for this guy. This uh, Tesla Torch laser saber was awesome enough to send me, which is pretty badass. I've been tempted to take this cap out to use it for things before, but I'm not going to do that. But, uh, See how big that cap is. 
This cap is much smaller, but it's still a fairly large capacitor. So I've got 20 volts on here in the cap. And I charged that up using this hand crank dynamo over here. So that's hooked up where I can refill this cap a little later. But I'm going to uh, just go ahead and cut it on at basically the lowest resistance I can, or the highest resistance in the circuit I can, lowest draw to get some uh, rotation out of there. So I'm going to spin it. See, there's no light. Resistance is too high. Right about there. So it's on now. I can't really hear any chirping going on. I'll keep cutting it up. You can really hear it now. Just gonna get it up to speed. Don't want to burn those LEDs out. Got the classic Bedini sound right there. So once it gets up to speed, I'm gonna back down a little bit. Refill this cap back to about 20. So back to about 20 volts. I'm backing down until I can just very barely hear the oscillation going on. So you can see we're we're getting some pretty good speed there off that uh, electrolytic. If I was to bump that up anywhere near its highest draw, it would really take off. So right about there, get it up to speed. He's back. Doesn't run very long. I mean, it's an, it's an electrolytic cap. Can't expect too much, especially for this kind of rotation. But I thought that was pretty cool. So essentially, if I can have another external way or maybe internal way of creating the high voltage to keep this cap charged, maybe bump down the capacitor to a smaller one, then maybe I can maintain about 20 volts in a, in a capacitor to run this from about 1.5 volt source. So that, that would be my uh, solution to getting high RPMs from a double A if I wanted to. This thing is getting to about 10 volts now. So I'm going to uh, just crank it up a little bit more. Crank it up a little bit more here. Yeah? Now I can hear all, oh, yep. He's dead now. He's dead, Jim. I don't hear any oscillation going on. And right now, I also wanted to say it's getting to the point now where it's interestingly trying to battle that capacitor uh, through the coil here because it's, oh, excuse me, right here, because it's trying to charge up that capacitor. Maybe if I cut the resistance down, you can see that. Let's see, see how I, I cut the resistance, excuse me, all the way up, have the circuit draw less. And now you can see because of that, that cap is taking in a little bit of charge from this uh, spinning rotor. So that's the interesting part there, you know, obviously if I spin this up fast enough, it'll put charge back in that front cap. But it's that interesting dance they play when it gets to that point. An interesting game they play, rather. So 
Well, yeah, there you go. You know, if you have a way to put more uh, juice back into the cap like that, you know, keep it funky, keep it going fast, get your very um, nice and bright spikes there. So long as you have a high voltage circuit that is efficient from a small AAA battery or so. All right, so you can see here that maybe you can if this thing focuses. So we got the uh, pancake coil here. It's kind of jammed in there. The coil from the dollar store, dancing flower, whatever. It's pretty flush with the front of this coil here. That's all that is. It's acting like a... Uh, regular bifiler coil obviously except the trigger winding is that little tiny one there which is going to pick up um, current from a passing magnet much better than this larger one here just because there's so many turns down there um, it's the voltage over current that seems to make the difference there as far as uh, switching the transistor um, even though you would think it would be the other way around or both but um that's that's pretty much it um that just that one coil and obviously the the rotor has to be pretty free moving i have that on a pc fan bearing you know under here is just kind of a mess of random stuff um but can't show you what this coil does yet because it's not hooked up. And if I use the 3055 I have right now underneath this housing, it attracts the magnet a little too much. So that's all that is. But yeah, pretty cool.